I've been in the industry 11 years now, and during that time I've been a specialised salesperson, first focused on ETFs and more recently investment trusts. And in this role, I've been lucky enough to get to know the investment community across the UK and Ireland quite well. I've been at BMO four years, and earlier this year I made the transition to focus exclusively on investment trusts. And now I'm the head of investment trust sales at BMO. Investment trusts I see as a multifaceted investment structure that has proven to stay relevant over such a long time, and that's why I'm really enjoying this role. I really enjoy speaking to and understanding the investment decisions of all the different types of investors in FNC Investment Trust. There is a real mixture, even within the personal investor cohort who access our investment trust through the BMO savings plan. It varies from young children whose parents chose FNC Investment Trust when they were setting up their child trust fund, or the equivalent now is called JISA to those who have held it for nearly a whole lifetime. Then when I speak to the professional investors, many in the wealth management industry have large holdings and some have held it over several generations. For example, where wealthy grandparents have passed the investment on to their kids and the subsequent kids have inherited it too, which I think is lovely. And last but not least, there's a strong and growing trend of buyers on the shared dealing platforms that allow individuals who may not have a connection with BMO to invest directly in FNC Investment Trust. It's great that the insights of the markets that Pool provides are spreading far and wide. I think the key differentiator of FNC Investment Trust is the expertise that Paul Niven has and that he draws on from around the world to make strategic decisions about how to invest. At BMO, he is the chair of the Global Asset Allocation Committee and oversees investment policy across Europe and Middle East. So the experts involved in these committees debate the key macroeconomic themes and how those will influence the markets. But Paul uses his judgment then to allocate to the equity regions and styles of investing that he believes will provide the best opportunities from around the world. And he chooses the proportions to maximize diversification benefits. A great example of how he's allocated wisely, yet quite differently to many other global equity fund managers, is his choice of investing in private equity, i.e. the companies who haven't yet listed on a public exchange. Over the last five years, this segment of the FNC Investment Trust portfolio has returned over 80%, which is roughly double what the European equity market has returned in the same period. It's a one-stop shop for those looking for exposure to the stock market without being too focused on one particular region, sector or method of investing. If you're investing personally for yourself, I think it's great to be able to tap into the judgment calls of the experts rather than choosing how much of your portfolio you should have in North America or Europe or emerging markets and the types of stocks even within those areas, especially as markets can move so fast these days in different directions. But even for professional investors, it serves as a strong core for most investor profiles. And when things are so uncertain, and as types of stocks are perceived to be quite expensive these days, it's a great way to continue to add to any equity allocation. As for choosing an investment trust, I'd argue it has benefits over other types of funds. As I've mentioned, a global portfolio like FNC Investment Trust is balanced and diversified in its approach but it can also boost its returns in certain market conditions by using gearing where the fund manager borrows to invest more. By using its revenue reserves built up in the good times, it can also smooth out the income distributed to shareholders, particularly when they need it most, such as this year. 
In fact, FNC Investment Trust has grown its dividend every year for the last 49 years. And so if it does so again this year, it'll be 50 years on the trot.